Hi guys, it's Meg Ray, and this is a creative tutorial in which I will show you how to use the brand new loft tool by Arcaniacs. This is a much improved alternative to the spline brush for creating cloth into other organic shapes in Minecraft. So if you've ever had difficulty with that, then you should definitely look into trying the loft tool. This command is only available on the plugin Archeon, and you can get that by becoming a patron to Arcaniacs. Or you could join a server such as Builders Refuge that has the tool already available to its members. Once you have the tool available to you, go ahead and grab a piece of paper and we can get started. I'm going to start off by showing you how to make your loft selection. A selection is basically composed of a series of frames. And a single frame is essentially like a curve where you select multiple points to create a line. And then we will select multiple frames and in the end get a final shape. Think about it like doing connect the dots, but one line at a time. To start a frame, we're just going to use a piece of paper and left click on our first block. And this will be the start of our frame. You can alternatively use the command loft frame to set this, but this will set the frame to wherever you're standing. To add additional points to this frame, we just need to right click on the next block. And as you can see, we have these very handy particles that show us exactly what our selection is looking like. There's also a command you can use to set a point that is loft point. But again, this command will set the point to whatever block you are standing on. So I just prefer clicking, I do think it's easier. But the commands are there if you need them. Let me go ahead and add a third point here, and now you can see our selection is curved. This is my first frame on my loft. Now you can have as many points as you want in a single frame, but you have to have at least two frames in order to set the loft. So now I'm just going to continue adding frames until I get all of this shape selected left-clicking to start our new frame, and right-clicking to add on the points. And as you continue to select the frames, you can see the particles start to morph into the final shape that we will be setting, which is extremely helpful, especially for us visual people who like to see what we are doing before we actually do it. Right now, my selection is looking like just a little piece of cloth, which is probably going to be the main use for this tool, but I did find some other uses that I will show you later. If you want to adjust your selection, that's easy to do too. All you have to do is do the command loft remove, and it will remove the last point that you selected. Another helpful thing that you could do is you can do that same command, but then add the flag minus C, and it will just remove the point that is closest to you. In this case, it was that frame. So this could be useful if you wanted to make some adjustments to your selection, but now I've kind of messed up my whole selection, so I'm just going to remove all of my frames. And to do this, I just use the command loft clear. And there we go. All of our frames are cleared and you can tell very easily because the particles are gone. All right, for a quick review, I made a brand new shape and we're going to reselect the frames on it. Left clicking to start a frame and right clicking to add points to that frame. Again, you can have as many frames or points per frame as you want. I just chose to do three for mine. Now once we have it all selected in order to set this, it's super easy. We just do loft set to whatever block we want to set it to. Now we have this perfectly smooth cloth shape. Like I said, it will probably mostly be used for cloth. Another thing you can do when setting it is if you use the flag minus P, it will create a low poly loft, essentially removing all of the curves and making them all straight edges. So you could use that to get a very chiseled looking shape. Another thing we can do is we can add a count number and what this will do is it will divide it evenly into however many pieces we specify. After we have loft set and our block, then we're going to put our count number here. I'm going to divide this into 10 equal segments. And there you go! Now our shape is divided into 10 equal parts. And to put it simply, the way you select your frames is what determines the angle of these lines. So since I have selected my frames from left to right in this case, then the lines are going to be going that same direction. So you do have control on how these will be created depending on the angle that you selected your frames. Another flag we can add when setting is minus O, which will just outline the shape. That's pretty self-explanatory, it just creates an outline of the entire shape. Now if I were to specify both a count number and an outline, you can see we'd get both of those results. 
One more major thing to note is G-Mask does work when using this. So if you did have something like this that was already outlined and you wanted to just fill it in, that would be easy enough to do with a global mask. So I'm going to set a global mask to air and then do locked set to a different block to fill in all those empty spaces. So however you'd want to take advantage of this, it's always an option too. Something I forgot to mention before is you can set your selection to slabs, which will give you an extra smooth shape. I don't even know if we're in Minecraft anymore because this looks as smooth as silk. I can definitely see this coming in handy, especially on smaller organics. Now that you know how to do every single command, you can use these in many combinations to create all kinds of interesting patterns. I was messing around with it for just a few minutes and found several different interesting ways that it could be used that I'll probably end up using myself sometime. So I thought I'd share some with you. The first one I want to show you is this checkered or net pattern. And it's really simple. We're just going to select all of our frames going the same direction. So I'm going to select all of mine going horizontally. And once I have all of them selected, I'm going to go ahead and set it with a specific count number. I'm going to do 10 again this time. So now we have 10 equal segments going this direction. Now I have to clear all of my frames before making a new selection. This time I'm going to select the exact same shape, but going vertically instead. So find all the points that will create the shape again. And then we're just going to set it to the exact same thing with the 10 count. If you want perfect squares, it will have to be the same count number each time. And just like that, with two commands, we made a perfect checkered pattern, which also looks a lot like a net. I can see it coming in very handy for things like that too. This next pattern is going to be a twisted cone. Now there might be other ways you could possibly make this, but I thought it was interesting that you could really easily do this with the loft tool. I have all of these points already laid out. They are in a perfect circle, and I'm just going to use my paper to select them in a twisted pattern. So I'm going to left click on this top one, and that's going to be the beginning for each of my frames, and right click on any of these middle ones. And for the last one, I'm going to select the next point over so I get this twisted frame. Now I'm just going to repeat that for all of the other points until I have them all selected. So I rotated these points into six segments equally. Right now you can see I did select all of my points, but my shape is incomplete, so I'm just going to reselect my first frame to fill in that shape around the bottom. In order to get my frames outlined like I want them to, I'm going to have to use a count number of 6 to follow those frames that I just traced. So we're going to set it to a block with a count number of 6. And there we go! Increasing or decreasing the count number would add more or fewer of these curves, but I wanted them to trace the points I made, so I only did six. We can also add the flag minus O if we wanted it to trace around the bottom. Now I'm just going to do a quick G mask on air so I can fill in all these spaces, and we'll go ahead and set that to a different block. And there we have a twisted cone pattern. I know it's kind of messy and it could be cleaned up a bit. I'm just throwing ideas out there. Using the exact same commands like we did on the cone, we can make a very simple leaf. I have these five points set, and I'm going to select my frames top to bottom, starting from that green block. And you can already see the leaf shape coming together just from your selection. And I want to make sure I am selecting them vertically so that the veins on my leaf will be going the right direction. We could just set it like this, as it is, or we could specify a count number and add details, like we did before. So let's go ahead and do loft set with a dark green block, and we'll split it just a few times. And that makes our veins on our leaf, and they look pretty good. Now to fill in all those gaps just like before, we're going to use a G mask on air, and fill in all those gaps with a lighter green block. And it just creates the perfect little leaf so easily. I'm definitely now thinking about doing something with lots of large foliage. That's all I have to show you right now for this tool. I'm sure I could have showed you a lot more, but I want to encourage you to try out the tool for yourself and see what other kinds of patterns or designs you can come up with. Also, if you have any questions, feel free to comment them below or reach out to Arcaniacs and ask him yourself. 
there are links in the description if you're interested in checking out all of his other development tools further. Thanks for watching guys and happy building!